Okay, so welcome everybody officially to our ankle and foot workshop from Egoscue. Uh, kind of jo joint hosting here. Um, so I'm Zach Beers. I'm the clinic owner and therapist here in Seattle, and my uh, partner here, Martin McFarland. Um, he'll be helping out. He's uh, down in Portland, so we'll both be kind of tag teaming this today. But um, actually, Martin, why don't you introduce yourself first, if you don't mind? You're still muted. Sorry, I muted everyone. There we go. <laughs> Hello, um, I'm Martin McFarland, and I am the director of the Agasca Portland Clinic, and I've been practicing the method coming up on uh, 22 years now. And I was introduced uh, to the method, gosh, back in 1999 uh, by my boss. Um, at the time I was experiencing uh, chronic uh, hip and back pain uh, that I'd had for over 10 years at that time. And um, I was working in the fitness industry and um, it was very frustrating because I was lean and fit and <clears throat> I could, do all the functional fitness exercises, but I had extreme pain. And uh, <clears throat> my story goes, it was getting to the point where it was starting to interrupt uh, my work performance, uh, my sleep cycles, my relationships, my outlook on life. And so my boss, um, she was getting frustrated too at the time. So she introduced me to the pain-free book. And ultimately, that led me to uh, getting a personalized session, um, like many of you have, have done. And I was like blown away when I saw my posture photos, how imbalanced I was. Even though I was young and lean and fit, um, I had some very severe uh, compensations. Um, I was diagnosed with uh, scoliosis when I was three. Um, I had injured my hip and back when I was 19. Um, I was a professional bike rider and I crashed. And that uh, crash plagued me for um, over a decade. And so um, when I went for a session, uh, I was amazed how different I felt uh, after doing just a few simple exercises. And all of my clients at the time um, were experiencing some sort of uh, pain or body aches or functional limitations. So I'm like, wow, you know, I have to learn this method um, so I can help um, other people with it. And that's really um, what got me started on my journey. Awesome. Yeah, uh, that's a great story. And it's a similar background for me, um, although I haven't been doing this quite as long. I started about seven years ago. Um, well, I learned about it a little before that. I was in, in college studying exercise sciences, um, also doing some personal training. Um, and one of my professors introduced it to me and it had been a lifesaver for him and his back problems. Um, and at the time when I first learned about it, I thought, oh, this is great. Something I can use for my personal training clients, um, just, you know, help prevent injury or, or heal from pain. Uh, but of course being, you know, 20 something and thinking I was invincible, I thought, um, it's not something I need, right? This is, I don't, I'm perfect. Right. So, well, turns out I started, uh, I had my fair share of, uh, postural issues and that led to some back and shoulder pain. When I was playing a lot of racquetball in grad school and so I decided to maybe I should give this Egoski a shot for myself and sure enough um, I saw you know that got my pictures taken and could see like exactly what was going on with my body alignment and how that was causing my pain and um, did the exercises and of course it helped me feel better as well and so um, allowed me to keep playing my racquetball and being active without any pain anymore so that's kind of what got me started. Um, and I got the job uh, out of grad school working with Martin and the Portland Clinic as a therapist. And then uh, about five years ago, I moved to Seattle to open up my own uh, clinic here. So here I am. And um, uh, today's topic being about foot and ankles, I thought this would be relevant to share. So a little bit more about just my own personal experience with this. So these are pictures of my uh, lovely feet and ankles uh, about four years apart. So that 2014, that was when I was first starting to get into Egoscue. So I had some, I've, I found some old posture photos, one of my first, if not my first posture photos from back then. And then um, compared again to a few years later. 
But anyway, so obviously in the top photos, you can see my left more than my right, but both ankles are pretty collapsed, you know, pretty pronated, uh, or my feet were flattening out. If um, They weren't completely flat, but they were heading that direction. And I had the whole, you know, custom orthotics made when I was a teenager and had been wearing those for several years um, and was just told, you know, like, you've got flat feet, you pronate, you're going to have to just wear these orthotics and that's just how it is or it's genetic or whatever. So I was like, okay, just, you know, that's what everyone's taught me. So it wasn't until I started investigating Egoscu and learning that it's not necessarily uh, true that I could change and that um, there was more to it than that. So I started, this was after doing Egoscu, of course, but also I switched, I got rid of my orthotics and switched to a more minimalist barefoot shoe, which we'll talk about later. But um, for me, it made a huge difference. And you can see how they're not perfect, but much better in the ankle position. You can actually see some arch happening there. The feet are pointed straighter, which also helps. Um, and I like just, you know, if you look at the angle of my Achilles tendon here, this on the back side, especially on this left, how it bows in like that, you can see they're very well straighter um, after a few years. So just showing how, you know, we hear that a lot of clients and maybe some of you experience or have this uh, condition as well of flat feet or uh, weak ankles or, you know, any variation of that just shows how you can make a difference and it's not going to be an overnight fix, but it can change. And so just thought I'd share that. So, so uh, talking to you folks, participants, um, what have you been diagnosed with? These are some of the common issues that we deal with in the clinic relating to feet and ankles, bunions, hammer toes, plantar fasciitis, arthritis, bone spurs, flat feet we mentioned, Morton's neuroma. So maybe you can relate to some or um, one or, or multiple of those uh, conditions, but um, does anybody have any, if you're okay sharing, if you go ahead and unmute or put it in the chat, anything else that um, I don't have on that list? Any other things that maybe you're curious to learn more about? Or does that cover it? <laughs> Assuming we covered it there. Oh, we've got a few chats here. Tarsal tunnel, okay. Uh, neuropathy, okay, yeah, we do see a lot of that. Um, weak ankles, flat feet, Muller's down lows, yeah. So, okay, good. So these are all, um, you know, we're not gonna really have time to go dive deep into each of these symptoms, but, um, cramping. Okay. Yeah. But these are all issues that we've seen uh, in the clinic and that uh, we've seen improve, you know, with doing Egoscu and, and proper footwear. So, um, so yeah, I, I think uh, at Egoscu, I guess one of the takeaways here is that uh, we look at things a little differently, meaning when we, you come in with these symptoms um, or diagnoses, um, we want to ask the question why, you know, and not just the normal answer that you've probably heard from your doctors or the internet um, about your age or gen genetics or, or whatever, but, um, but rather like really what's, what's causing it. And especially if you have something on one foot, but not the other, you know, and then you have to really think, okay, well, why both feet are the same age, they've got the same genetics, like why would one foot develop something differently than the other side? So um, that's what really what we're first step in figuring out and curing or, you know, treating your, your problems is we have to know the, the cause. And so the pain is not, um, you know, necessarily a sign of, of damage or that there's anything uh, even inherently wrong or that's unfixable, it's just a warning. And so these are these warning signals, kind of like the check engine light on your car, you need to pay attention to them if you want to, uh, if you want to fix the problem at least. And rather than just ignoring it or shutting off the light or shutting off this pain signal by taking pain medication, or even you could argue, um, you know, wearing like a, like an 
uh, like an orthotic or something that artificially puts your foot in a better position, um, but it's not really fixing it. Um, it's just going to prolong the inevitable. So um, we have to listen to our body's signal and investigate it and then treat the actual cause uh, versus just the symptom. So what is the cause? Well, uh, these are some, as I mentioned, a few things that people typically blame their pain on. Um, but uh, none of the, well, the job you have some control over, um, but your age and your genetics, you don't have any real control over that. So rather than focusing on those things, let's look at, okay, well, what could there be something with your lifestyle or your posture, um, your activity levels that has something to do with it? Those are things you can change. Um, and so obviously, as if you're not already aware, Egoscu, we're a posture company, we're focused on body alignment. And so, um, you know, it's a pretty simple concept. And I think most people, it makes sense um, that when our bodies are out of alignment, just like this house, it's, they're not going to be very stable. They're more likely to break down, uh, to, to hurt and, um, and uh, just be more susceptible to stress. So now what is posture? Um, we're really talking about the entire body here. So it is, there's a foot posture, there's an ankle posture, there's, you know, just like there's a posture we think about for our, for our head and our um, shoulder positions, all the joints in the body need to be lined up properly. And when they're not, it puts extra stress on the various uh, parts. And so basically um, it's all about balance. We'll talk specifically what it looks like in a second. Um, but it's really, when, when we use this word posture, I just want you guys to know that it's, it's, it's about how all those joints are functioning together. They need to all have their own job and, and not be doing extra work that they're not designed for. Um, Cause that's what causes things to start to break down or deform um, prematurely. So really our bodies are designed to move. That's what it comes down to um, uh, from a young age, you know, uh, we start moving and start rolling over, sitting up, crawling, standing, walking. They're all really important stages. And, um, and then we're designed to be moving our entire lives. And if we don't, um, which modern lifestyle doesn't really support, right? Where we kind of, most of us have jobs where we sit too much or we are not sitting at work. We're probably sitting at home or sitting in our cars. Um, we may exercise occasionally but we're really not moving as much as our bodies are designed to. If you think of back to when you were a kid, I think most of us can remember always moving and playing sports or just games, you know, playing at the playgrounds, things like that, that we don't do anymore. And so our bodies develop these muscle imbalances. We're not using some muscles enough. Maybe we're overworking or overstressing other areas. Um, and so we develop, uh, bones do what the muscles tell them to do. So if our muscles are out of balance, it's going to cause an out of balanced uh, posture. Um, and I'm getting some questions in the chat just to, yes, we are going to be recording this and sending um, recording out after the fact. So make sure if you haven't, I think everybody's probably RSVP'd and sent an email. If not, make sure you email me, Seattle at Egoscu. So I have your email address so I can send you the recording. All right, so eliminating pain, just in summary here, obviously, as uh, we don't wanna just um, get rid of that signal, like covering up the check engine light, that'd be the equivalent of you know taking just pain medications, which none of these things are bad, by the way. Sometimes they're definitely necessary, but as a long-term solution, we wanna ask the question, okay, are we really fixing the problem, the why, or are we just covering up the what, you know, the symptom itself, surgery, same thing. Um, is it going to fix the problem or just, um, you know, take away some of the effects of the problem? Resting on vacation, sometimes super necessary, um, but once again, we can't rest forever. We need to be back to our daily lives. And also, we don't want to have to give up, like, you know, me giving up the racquetball. I could have just given up racquetball, right? Instead of treating the cause of my pain could have just avoided the things that hurt, but eventually you start limiting yourself more and more, and, you know, and that's a slippery slope to follow that we don't want to do. So um, let's talk about what the posture is really quick. I'll 
turn the time over to Martin to describe this. All right, so when you come in um, and you do a personalized session in the clinic, what we look at and what we focus on is the eight low joints, ankles, knees, hips, and shoulders. And what we look for is, are they vertically stacked and are they at right angles? So we look for any deviations in all the planes, right? Is there an elevation in the hip? Is there a rotation? Is there asymmetries left to right? <clears throat> so what we do is <clears throat> we look at the foot and ankle and then we kind of work our way up to see how the knees are tracking with the ankles, right? It should be a vertical line, knees to the hips and hips to the shoulders. And so everything should be also the center of gravity is just centered right down the middle, right? If everything is square. And so from the side, if you want to forward it, Zach, um, what we look for is that vertical line, right? The spine is designed to be an S curve. So we put that line in and we see how those low joints are tracking on that vertical line, right? And from there, <clears throat> what we do is then we can create some common themes with how the body's deviating from our anatomical design. So, you know, we, we don't like to focus on symptom, but when people come in, you know, we look at, you know, and we talk about what's hurting, but we want to look for the root cause, right? What's causing that pain? What's the dysfunction? And that's really uh, the guiding force uh, with the therapy. So, and today we're talking about obviously uh, foot and ankle. So when we uh, assess gait, it's one of the things we look at, you know, are you striking heel ball toe? Are your feet turning out or sometimes turning in? Um, are you pronating? You know, are you supinating? Right? Are you walking in a straight line? Oftentimes we'll see people <clears throat> as they walk down um, the hall or in the office, they'll start to you know, list or lean to one side and they're not able to walk straight because one side of their body um, is not engaging. So all those things uh, give us insight into how our bodies or your bodies are deviating um, from our anatomical design. Um, these are things we see uh, all day, every day uh, in the clinic. Uh, bunions are especially popular <laughs> right now, especially because uh, what I've been told by um, a few podiatrists is on average, 95% of shoes are too narrow. And so bunions are common in that scenario when you try to stuff your foot um, in a narrow shoe. Um, the problem is, you know, the narrow shoes are designed to, uh, you know, look look pretty and, and be stylish, but they're not uh, very functional. And when the, the widest part of the foot is actually uh, the toes, right? And so the widest part of your shoe should be the toe box. And if it's not, you just get a constricted uh, force and over time it's gonna create bunions as well as a dysfunctional foot strike as well. You think of those bunions as like your body, um, you know, laying down bone. It's basically like a callus, right? You're putting more force there and you're not using your uh, feet evenly, how they're designed. Um, and the bottom picture shows uh, another common thing that we see a lot, you know, uh, heel pain could have a bone spur, heel spur, uh, the fascia can get inflamed. Um, those are all common things that we see, um, but you got to look at the big picture. It's not just the foot. Again, going back to what's the root cause, you know, you want to look at the knee position and the hip position and see how those three joints are interacting with each other. Yeah. Um, yeah, I liked what you said about the, the shoes. And I think um, we'll talk about the shoes in a second, but the toes being the widest part, that's pretty rare nowadays. I mean, you don't see too many people that who, whose feet are really healthy like that. If you don't mind sharing, Martin, I think you have pretty, <laughs> when I show you your monkey I have great feet. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got like, let's see here, where is it? Can you see it? Yeah. yeah. So notice how like his toes that they like the tip from the edge of his pinky toe to the edge of his big toe is actually wider um, than like the kind of the ball of the foot, the, like where the bunions would be. So most people think this is the widest part of their foot, but really that big toe should track like in a straight line from this bone here. Can you guys see my cursor, my mouse here? Okay, yeah, so this, you know, if we drew a straight line here, the big toe really should be pointed like that way. Um, and so, but like I said, you don't hardly see that anymore because most people's shoes are too narrow. 
And then that combined with improper loading of the foot itself, just it's a double whammy, you know? So hammer toes, another uh, symptom of a postural deviation. So it's basically your toes are gripping the ground to try to create some stability, right? So if you're lacking that stability for what various reasons, uh, your toes are gonna like grip and scrunch up and um, to try to support your body and which may be helpful in the short term, but in the long term that can cause pain and, um, you know, and plus it just doesn't look good, right? So uh, any questions so far, by the way, feel free to chime in. You can unmute yourself or put it in the chat. No worries. We're good. Okay. Oh, we did have a question. I migrate to pretty straight, but my other this point laterally. Hmm. Interesting. Like, so your big toes here and your other toes are pointed out the opposite way with the greater gap. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. That'd be interesting to see what's going on with the rest of your body that might be contributing to that. Or now, granted, there are some natural, like, uh, just differences between people and how they're, you know, length of their toes and, and stuff like that, that, you know, we're all a little unique in that regard, but the basic structure and alignment should be, you know, as we talked about, if you ever look at little kids feet, maybe not like newborn babies, actually, it takes a while for the arch of the feet to develop. But if you look at like toddlers or young children, um, unless they've been restricted by shoes too soon, uh, their feet are usually pretty perfect still. If you look at their toes, you know, spread out wide like that. Um, that's a really good example of healthy feet that they're supposed to look like uh, correct toes. How nice. Um, that's a good product. Uh, um, correct toes. They're like spacers you put between your toes and it helps to kind of correct that. So, um, okay. So talking about shoes, I know this is a controversial topic, but our opinion here at Egoscue and, and really it's not just our opinion. There's a lot of, um, uh, people out there now that I think see the value in uh, more minimalist shoes. But basically when you're looking at a shoe, we want something that's going to interfere as little as possible with your foot's natural function. Meaning if you think about the, well, heels are, are kind of an extreme example, but even like athletic, most athletic shoes, you've got a ton of cushioning, the heel is elevated relative to the toes. You know, you may not think of them as heels, but if you look at the side profile, you know, it's thicker on the heel than the, under the toes. Um, there's usually some kind of molded like arch support. Um, and then the toe box is, is pointed, tapered. Um, so we want the shoe to be flat, you know, to mimic being barefoot, you know, our feet should be flat, heel, same level as the ball and toes wide at the toes, like Martin talked about, and flexible to allow our foot to actually move and feel the ground. So it needs to be thin, relatively thin um, as well. So now caveat here is, of course, not everybody can just go cold turkey. And like, if you're used to wearing really cushy shoes and orthotics, we're not saying you need to throw them away and, and go barefoot all of a sudden because you're probably going to run into more problems if you do that okay but these are these are just like in an ideal situation this is what you'd be wearing and it may take time to transition to that but i i think that most people can get away with with a barefoot shoe eventually and really benefit from it so um oh, my shoes are actually in the other room <laughs> i'll grab them in a sec do you have your lens mark yeah. yes um so this is one brand. There's a lot of good uh, barefoot shoes out there, but you'll see the common theme, as I mentioned, is they're flat, they're wide at the toe box, um, they're flexible, so you can bend them and twist them and stuff. And they're, um, you know, it's just, it's the shoe's function is really just to keep your foot protected from getting, uh, you know, scraped or poked or uh, getting too cold. So that's really what feeder shoes should be. If you look back on the human history, it's only in the re last, you know, 50, 60 years that shoes started having all this, you know, arch support and cushioning and, and stuff. Um, and, uh, and so our feet are designed to be barefoot, you know, and that's kind of how our bodies should function. <laughs> 
so if you're interested in learning more about that, I really recommend this. Uh, if you go on YouTube and search shoe spiracy, like conspiracy but for shoes, um, it's a really interesting little mini documentary um, about this topic and how footwear came to be where it is now and, and uh, how damaging it is for our feet. Um, and it was put out by a company called Vivo Barefoot, which is a brand of shoes I really like. I used to wear them exclusively. Um, so I, I know this is a lot of stuff. Anybody have questions about uh, shoes or orth orthotics while we're on the topic? We've got some people in the chat. So Dr. Ray Callahan, Northwest Foot. Yep, so that's right close to the Portland and Clinic. Um, so you can look him up, Northwest Foot and Ankle, uh, Five Finger Shoes. I used to have them and have very flat feet. Not sure if they helped or not. Yeah, I mean, those are a similar idea. They just, um, you know, they're trying to mimic being barefoot while still protecting your foot. So I think they're great, you know, if you like them. I, pr I don't wear them, I prefer the shoe like what Martin just showed you that still looks kind of like a shoe <laughs> and covers all the toes. Um, but it's this functionally, they're basically the same. So the, yeah, I think they're good. Now, not sure if they helped or not. You know, if you just switch your shoes and do nothing else, you would probably see some benefits. You're, in fact, there's research showing that doing that will actually help strengthen the muscles in your feet and should create more stability and balance. But I think you also still need to address the rest of the body, the posture. If there's foot issues, there's probably issues going up the body and those other joints as well. And if we just focus in on the feet and ankle, we might be missing a big piece of it. Uh, yes, you can hike in them. I hike, that's all I wear. So there's hiking versions that have um, like a little more grippy grips on the bottom, but still same, same structure. PT recommended striking mid or front foot for softer foot landing. What do you think of that? Um, in a running situation, sure. When you're walking, you should still, I think, strike in the heel. Um, but, you know, I guess we would need more context. But generally speaking, walking, you should land on the heel first, then the ball, and then the toes. Uh, running. Then they recommended that more swinging gait and more front foot so that then then my hips aren't hurting i can't remember what hmm. they called the gate the lots of loose swinging and it's kind of semi based off yoga i think <clears throat> i'm not familiar with that martin do you have any is, is that chi walking yes yes chi walking yeah. oh, okay i've heard yeah that. so yeah we like to work it from the inside out you know anytime you have to consciously think it, it can be beneficial uh initially you know focusing on your gait focusing on heel ball toe strength but ultimately you want it to be unconscious right as you change the muscle memory it'll become more unconscious mm -hmm. so really when your body is balanced and functional you're gonna you don't have to create you know a secondary um you know compensation to um try to walk more functionally it should be natural just showing my uh, the shoes i've got the same ones as martin so they're lambs no, not, you know, there's, like I said, there's a few good brands out there. This is just what I'm wearing currently, but they all have flat, you know, wide at the toes and flexible. So that's kind of your test, those things you, when you're looking at shoes. The other thing- How do you spell it? Uh, L-E-M-S, I'll put it in the chat. L-E-M-S, lambs. Um, the other brand I like is Vivo, there foot. There's a lot of companies out there making more minimalist shoes now. Yeah, there's you know, actually a ton. Yeah. Yeah, there's a ton. And, and you definitely don't want to go from a stiff soled shoe with an orthotic, you know, with the half inch, you know, elevation in the heel to something that's totally flat. You know, you want to work your way down. So somebody mentioned earlier um, Northwest Foot Ankle and Dr. McClanahan. That's a great uh, website. If you go to that website and you click on resources, uh, he has a, a shoe list, right? Pros and cons. That's great. Um, and he also talks about how to transition from a stiff shoe to something more minimalist. So like Zach was saying earlier, you know, you just don't want to, you know, buy some limbs and then, you know, uh, go hike out in the gorge or, 
uh, what do you got up in Seattle, Mount Rainier, right? So it's definitely, you know, there's a strength training phase that you need to go through so you don't injure yourself. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, but you know, if you can, so of those three things, flat, wide, and flexible, if you can find a shoe that's maybe two out of the three, you know, that might be a good place to start that, um, transition your way there. And as far as the oh, test you can use to know if they're wide enough, um, is if you take the insoles out, put it on the ground, go barefoot or with socks on and stand on it, just the insole without the shoe. Um, and then look to see if your toes, because with the weight of your body, your toes will naturally kind of spread out and splay. And so if your toes extend past the edge of your insole, then you know that your shoe is going to be restricting that because your toes need to go this far, but your insoles are only that wide, right? So then you know that they're probably too narrow. So um, many of us already go barefoot as much as possible at home so they don't hurt. Yeah, great. That's another part of the picture is, you know, just going barefoot whenever you can indoors, even trying, if you've accustomed to that, if you can already go barefoot inside, maybe try doing some walking on your lawn barefoot or go to the beach or, you know, find a trail that doesn't have a lot of rocks and, and go barefoot there and just start engaging your feet like that. Cause there's like, you know, I don't know how many, but a lot of nerve endings on the bottom of your feet. And it's kind of like our hands, they're meant to feel a lot of things. And if we're always cushioning them and patting them and babying them, then, then we're never really stimulating the part of our foot and our bodies. So, all right, cool. I think we can move on here, but lots of, if you're not already, you can look in the chat. There's been a few people put, put a few different, um, resources here the clinic we mentioned i put the names of the shoe brands i like and some other people mentioned uh kitty bowman yeah she's got some good stuff on her feet too all right well let's talk about um posture let's practice this is your chance audience <laughs> to uh to practice what we just learned about posture and you know those load-bearing joints so i want you to open it up now for anybody to point out whatever you see here on this uh, client that looks off to you just based on the description we had earlier. Maybe I'll show you again real quick. So remember shoulders, hips, knees, ankles, straight lines, horizontal, vertical, side view, ear, shoulder, hip, knee, and ankle. All right, so go ahead and put it in the chat. What, what do you see? Uh, or unmute yourself. What's off with this guy? Head is forward, good, a whole lot. I mean, the ear should be on that line and he's barely touching the back of his head. So he's got a ways to go, huh? What else? Off of midline and both hips and knees from the front you're talking about, yeah. Yep, so he's kind of lift, shifting his weight to his left rotation chest is sunken yeah that's so we would talk about the thoracic back being flexed or or a little bit of kyphosis there like rounding in his upper back makes that kind of uh, chest be sunken as you mentioned good what else hips forward yep so from the side view here Someone first thing was mentioned was the head, but, and this is a common mistake. A lot of people know now how important that forward or the head position is. And we talk about forward head posture um, a lot. Most people though, outside of Egoski are gonna just try to work, think that's a neck issue. Like, oh, you just need to strengthen your neck and do chin tucks and stuff like that. But you have to look all the way down to the bottom and especially at the hips. And if they're forward, like is in his case, that already is putting all the joints above it ahead of where they should be, right? So his neck may not be a whole lot, you know, very forward relative to his shoulders, but, but if his hips are bailed out in front of him like that, it's just gonna bring everything with it. So um, that's why we have to work on the, the hips too. Shoulders forward, good. Hips forward, pelvis tipped forward. Yep, good, you guys are seeing that. Knees out of line. 
uh, ankle dorsiflexion. Yep. So just being generally that all describing that same thing, just having the hips, everything from the side view is forward. So think about how this relates to foot and ankle. So think about like his feet down at the very bottom, having to bear 100% of the weight of his body. And if all those joints are not stacked up properly, what is that doing to the pressure on his feet? I mean, it's changing it, right? We know it's not gonna, it's not gonna distribute the weight the same way he would if everything was stacked up, right? So this is why we have to look at the whole body because, um, you know, that's going to just that right there. If we knew nothing else, we didn't even look at him walk, but just looking at his posture, we can assume some things about, um, you know, where, where his foot pain might be coming from. So, all right. So this is him a few weeks uh, later and obviously <laughs> he's made some improvements, but what specifically, what, what do you see that looks different now? I'll wait. Well, the alignment of the head certainly yeah, so his ear is on the line now. It's awesome, right? And what, so what, was it just his neck that he pulled back all the way or what, what else happened below his neck? Oh, the shoulders. Yeah, shoulders and his hips, right? Yeah. Everything, yeah, pretty much everything is better. So he's more centered. If you look at the front view, you know, is he's not leaning over to the left as anymore. Nice and centered on that line, which is great. So he's, you can assume his, weight distribution in his feet is more 50-50 like it should be. Um, yeah, good. So this is just shows like, you know, posture is not something that's you're stuck with forever. It's, it's always changing. It's adapting to what you're using your body for, for better or for worse. And, uh, you know, this is the result of him implementing um, his exercises on a daily basis and making changes to those muscles. Um, and as a result, he looks better more importantly, he feels better, right? He's able to now function at a much higher level and do a lot more things without pain because he's not fighting against all these, you know, crooked uh, positions. So how long did he do his exercises for? I, I think between these two photos, it was uh, about eight, it was after our eight session program. So uh, about two months, two, maybe three months. So Just going to show a few other before and afters, um, just to show. Was that someone tried to say something that broke up? Maybe. Okay. So this guy on the top looks pretty crooked, right? I think he was in the middle of a back spasm too, so that probably made things even uh, more exaggerated, <laughs> but just very off center, not loading both sides of his body at all. Um, stuck in flexion, meaning his, his spine is rounded forward, his knees are bent, his hips are tucked under. I mean, just everything is, is out of whack here. So um, obviously much better, much better here. And um, here's some good examples of just showing how it can affect you know, it can benefit people of all ages. So um, this guy in his 20s and this lady was in her 70s at the time. Um, and so it's never too late. <laughs> Your posture can always be improved. Um, this lady right here, <clears throat> one of my favorite clients, she was, uh, like I said, upper eight, 70s. I think she's 80 something now, but she would hike uh, and photograph wildlife or wildflowers and she had a blog too it was like really cool for someone for her age to be doing that and um but she was she had like pain in various places in her body and that was preventing her from enjoying her blogging and hiking and so um it was just really fun to see how she made those changes and was able to keep hiking you know, like pretty significant hikes you know not just uh short little day hikes but 10 mile you know, hikes in the mountains. So it just shows the potential of our bodies, even at, uh, towards the end of our lives. It's, it's never, you know, never too late. So 
Okay. Um, well, I think that's enough talking for me. Why don't we um, show you guys some things, uh, some examples, and we're going to take you through a few exercises. And just once again, caveat here is these are just generic exercises that we're, we try to choose that everybody could, most everybody should be able to do. Um, but if you can't do it, that's okay. If, if you have pain when you do any of these, just stop and maybe talk to us afterwards. Um, but uh, these obviously are not going to be the perfect exercise for everybody, but we'll, uh, we'll take you through a few examples just so you can get an idea of the potential for Egoscu. So uh, Martin, why don't you take us through a weight distribution test here? Sounds good. All right. So I'm going to have everyone stand up and you want to take your shoes off and preferably your socks off too, if you're comfortable with that. Give everybody another minute here. Shoes off, socks off. And what I want you to do is just march in place a few times and just allow your feet and knees to go wherever they'd like to go. And then when you stop, I just want you to relax and you wanna kind of feel like you're in a stance that feels natural to you, how you would normally stand if you were, for example, visiting with a friend. And then I want you to first close your eyes and I want you to feel the weight distribution in your feet. Okay, see if you can tune into how your body's loading. Your left foot, your right foot, the front of the foot, the back, inside, outside. And just make a mental note. What do you feel? Where are you heavy? Where are you light? Where's the pressure? Now you wanna open your eyes and look down at your feet and see if they're pointed straight ahead, 12 o'clock, like our anatomical design, or are they turned out, sometimes turned inward? Is one turned out more than the other? Or is it bilateral? Are they equally everted? Just kind of get a sense of that. And then what I want you to do is turn them straight ahead now at 12 o'clock. So if you look down, should look like you're skiing straight ahead. And you only want them about five to six inches wide. So the center of your hip, which is your hip bones right here on the front of your hip should line up with the center of your knee, center of the ankle, right through the second and third toe. So you're gonna get that 12 o'clock position. And then what I'm gonna have you do is some arm circles. So you're going to make what we call a golfer's grip. It's like a claw. You're going to take the tips of your fingers and put them in the pads of your hand and make a claw. You're going to put your arms straight out from your shoulders. And then what you want to do is gently draw your shoulder blades together. You don't want to do this. You want to keep them straight out. Gently squeeze your shoulders and try not to elevate your neck muscles. Keep them relaxed. And then you're going to circle about a six inch diameter going forward. And you wanna keep your elbows straight. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna link the wrist to the elbow to the shoulder. And you're gonna keep going. We're gonna do about 20 or so. And keep the shoulder blades pinched. Okay, your palms should be facing down. So your thumbs are pointed forward. Yep, can everybody see that? Palms down going forward. And then for the second position, you want to rotate your palms up so your thumbs are pointed backwards. Make sure your elbows are straight. Now you're going to go up, back, down, and around. So we're going to circle backwards. Now, if your biceps are tight, the elbows are going to try to bend. So you want to do your best to keep them straight and keep your neck muscles and your shoulders relaxed down and keep the shoulder blades pinched. And this exercise we tend to do a little quickly, you know, you want to get that momentum going. So that's intentional. And, and it's okay to kind of feel like your body's gently oscillating front to back. So we'll do about 10 more. Anybody's shoulders getting tired already? <laughs> Good. Okay. Now we're going to use that same hand position. 
look down and make sure again your feet are straight. You're going to put your third finger or your ring finger on your temple. And you're going to gently bring your elbows together, shoulder height. So you want to make sure your elbows are also even. You want to make sure they're not like this. Keep the neck muscles relaxed down. And you want to think of your knuckles as like a hinge on a door. And you're leading from the shoulder. So you're opening and closing that door. You want to make sure you keep your wrists straight and your thumbs pointed downward. You want to go all the way forward if you can. You don't want to cause any pain. You can work into it and go all the way back. Like you're going to try to touch the wall behind you. I'm going to get those shoulder blades moving. Yeah, so Kathy, your um, knuckles, put them like point, put them just behind your eyes. And then when you bring your arms in front of you, they can rotate like they're kind of rocking on your forehead. Yeah, there you go. Like you don't need to try to keep them glued to your face because then you're not going to be able to move your <laughs> move your arms. So now I don't know about you guys, but I'm starting to feel my shoulders. I did a pretty hard workout this morning. <laughs> it's good. And then relax, kind of shake it off for a minute. And the next exercise we're going to do an overhead extension. So you want to interlace your fingers. Push your palms away from you, straighten out your elbows. You're gonna bring your arms up as high as you can, keeping your neck muscles or your trapezius muscles relaxed down and your elbows straight. So even if you only come out to here, that's okay. But you need to keep your elbows straight to get the full benefit. The other thing I wanna mention here is you wanna make sure that your hips don't come forward of that gravity line. So sometimes, the body will try to do this. So you create a vertical position. Keep your hips back, abdominals relaxed. And then gently look up at your fingers. Yep. And if you can cock the head back comfortably, it can be even more powerful to create a better thoracic or upper back position. Mm. Don't force it. And sometimes people, they have to, you know, look straight ahead and that's okay. Work in progress, is what we like to say. So we'll do 15 more seconds. Relax the tummy, elbows are straight. Shoulders relax down. My wife, Kelly, likes to say, don't wear your shoulders for earrings. That's good, and then relax your arms. And then walk in place again, take three or four steps. And then relax. And then tune in again to that weight distribution in your feet and take a look at them and see if that created a change. Yeah, so who feels something different now than when they checked in with their feet, you know, five minutes ago? Yeah, Fran? I feel I'm on more, more centered on the, the, my weight is more centered on the both whole feet. Nice. That's awesome. Where, where was it before? Right. Um, much more on, I was trying, I'm, I'm, I've been flat footed since birth and I have hypermobile joints. So I was trying to not be, uh, um, not invert. Mm -hmm. And now it was more comfortable without inverting, without trying to, to change wow. it. Good. Well, that's exciting. <clears throat> Anybody else? We got some people in the chat. More balance, weight from toes to heels. Good. So, if, yeah, maybe if you were feeling your weight more on the front of your feet earlier, you could have had kind of a similar posture to the guy we saw earlier with kind of being forward at your hips and everything in front of the gravity line. So now you're feeling it more in your heels. That's probably a good sign. Awesome. Who else? I felt more symmetrical too. I had. My feet were, I was a little heavier on my left earlier. Um, some people just typing. So what does that mean? You know, we just did three basically shoulder exercises and your feet feel different. <laughs> so care to take a stab at that? Uh, Fran, why do you think, why do you think your feet felt different? Um, I'm not sure how to verbalize it. Yeah, that's okay. 
So, so can uh, I make another comment? Yeah. I'm bone to bone on one knee. Mm -hmm. um, I've managed to have it not hurt at all until for six years, until yesterday. Oh yeah. And I, when I just got up to start these exercises, it had started hurting again. Mm -hmm. And I did these exercises and it's totally discomfort free. Wow. <laughs> not even pain free, just not even any, any, any discomfort. Yeah. Pretty awesome. So tells you your body wants to like those exercises, huh? <laughs> so what we did there was just change. Uh, we used, you know, stimulus of exercise on your, mostly your upper body, all the joints were affected, but just by changing your shoulders and your upper back position and teaching your body, okay, you know, let's load both feet evenly. Now, you know, you're going to feel a difference in your feet. You're going to feel, uh, hopefully less pain as Fran did, but, um, it just shows you how quickly your body can adapt. So we also wanted to show just, a. If this is a foot and ankle issue. I think it'd be important to show you just a real basic exercise that we can do specifically to help strengthen and mobilize your ankle and foot because that's an important joint too. So Martin, why don't you take us through that real quick? Yeah, you want to walk them through it, Zach? And I'll actually, I've got a. I just heard someone knocking on my door, so I'm going to step out for a sec. <laughs> okay. So uh, I'll be right back. Good. Okay. So I'm going to have everybody uh, come down on their back. If possible, you can start with your knees bent. I'm going to have you extend one leg out straight, and you want to make sure your foot is pointing straight to the ceiling or 12 o'clock. You're going to bring your other leg, you're going to bring your knee back toward your chest. You're not trying to see how far you can stretch back. You just want to break that 90 degree angle. And you want your heel and your ankle just slightly higher than your knee. And you're going to grab your hamstring and you're going to do foot circles with that foot. Huh. You're going to circle about 20 times. We're going to do clockwise and counterclockwise. Try to relax your shoulders. Make sure you're not rounding them forward. Keep them relaxed down on the ground. And you want to use a full range of motion. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, just a little bit. There you go. You want a full range of motion at your ankle. And if you want extra credit, you can try to spread your toes while you do this. And notice he's not moving the whole leg, right? It's just the ankle and foot. So if you're, sometimes we see people like swinging their whole <laughs> lower leg around. So, so you want to circle, you know, I think 20 is a good place to start, right? 20 clockwise, 20 counterclockwise. Yeah. Which directions? And then, yeah, go both ways. And then also you're going to point and flex. So just go straight up and down as well. Um, but really, I, you know, our standard here in the clinic is we try to get people to do 40, but that's, as you can probably feel already, it's not easy. <laughs> so start with what you can do. You might feel some burning your muscles in your shin or your ankle or calf, which is normal. It just shows how probably weak some of those areas are. Um, but this will help restore the natural uh, movement of the ankle and, and strengthen some of those supporting structures. Of course, you want to do both sides. So um, let's see, how's everybody doing? Like the, uh, oh, that's just a virtual background of a dog just chilling there um well, i see a lot of people uh, out of their camera which means they must be on the floor which is good anybody have any questions about this one so far is it feeling okay okay good i want to remind them zach about the extended leg yeah so the opposite leg whatever leg you're not circling with should be straight so straighten out your leg on the floor if you can um, just let the leg rest there, but just prevent it from turning out, you know, keep the foot and knee at 12 o'clock. Okay. So same number of reps out in and back and forth. So now we're at the top, uh, top of the hour. Now we just got 
think one more slide here and we'll wrap up. But um, I'm feeling it. What about socks? Sometimes they feel tight. Uh, socks. I don't know. I don't talk about socks as much as shoes. I don't think. I mean, I suppose if their socks are really tight, that could restrict your foot movement. But they're also flexible enough that it. I don't know if it would really. What do you think, Martin? Does socks? Do you tell any? Do you have any opinion on socks? I don't. <laughs> it's something that's comfortable. Uh, no, I tend not to wear socks anymore. Um, yeah. But I think when you go, you know, obviously barefoot, you know, you, there's, you know, so many receptors on the bottoms of our feet and those receptors send, you know, messages to our brain, you know, proprioception. And so, you know, even with the sock, it can get muted. So I think it's, it's critically important to, you know, even go sockless, um, so even if it's just around the house, right? So you can stimulate um, you know, the, those receptors essentially. Yeah. Does that answer uh, your question? Hopefully. Yeah. And I know it's not all socks are created equal. Some have, I, you know, they try to put like arch support in your socks and stuff while well, they're like making an elastic like around that part of your foot. So I don't know. Yeah. That's probably not similar to the shoes. You want something that's going to interfere as little as possible with your foot's natural movement so yeah and, and the toe socks can be powerful too yeah right the injinjis they're fun to put on but um they can give you a bit of toe spread as well all right well so next step so what are you going to do after we log out here well there's kind of three different action steps that i think you should take at least one of these. <laughs> um, but so let's say uh, you might still be skeptical after this, which would be totally fine. You know, it's, we're throwing a lot of new information at you here and it probably goes, it could go against some of what you believe or, or have been told in the past. So it's good to have questions. If you wanna learn more though, um, the a really good resource is the book, Pain Free. It was written by our founder, Pete Egoscu. That's wh where the name comes from, by the way, Egoscu Method. Um, you can get that on Amazon for $15, I think, um, or at your bookstore library. But basically, read the first three chapters. It'll explain the method, you know, how it came about, how it works. Um, and there's a chapter dedicated to every body part, including the feet and ankles. So you can go and read specifically more in detail about how, how this all affects your feet and ankles. And there's some exercises in there you can try. Um, to um, to address uh, foot and ankle pain and issues. So granted, it's a book, so it's not specific to your body per se, but if it's been helpful for many people. And I think it's a great resource and it's relatively almost free. So, you know, good place to start if you're skeptical. So now you may feel like this is making sense. Uh, you've liked what you've seen and heard, um, but you're still not sure if this is for you or not. Um, Maybe you've got a, some kind of issue that's unique or you're not sure if Egoscu can help. Um, we're happy to ch chat with you about that. And if you'd like to get your posture assessed just so you can see exactly, you know, just like the pictures, we can put lines on there and show you, you know, where all your joints are relative to each other. Um, and so call or email and schedule a free evaluation or a consult and we can do that on Zoom or in the clinics if you're close by. Um, but if you're just looking for more information, we're happy to provide it. Now, the last step, of course, is if you're ready to make a change, you know, you're feeling like you've been dealing with this pain a long time, you think that this might be the answer and you're ready to put in the work to make it, make it happen, then uh, we'd be happy to partner with you to, to help you get there. So our um, our process, and I'll put the prices here so you know ahead of time, but we, these are the two packages we offer. It's the same um, in any Egoscu licensed clinic around the country, but we're giving you a, just Portland and Seattle, um, we're giving 10% uh, off to uh, any of you if you decide to sign up as a thank you. And um, just a real quick description of kind of what to expect with our program. Um, you know, first a set, first appointment usually takes about an hour and a half. 
go through a health history, talk more about your situation, um, go through the posture assessment. We'll take photos. We'll look at your gait as we uh, talked about, um, look at some other movements and just really figuring out what the cause of your pain is. Um, and then we'll prescribe specific exercises to you. So everybody's body is different. Everybody's going to need different exercises. Um, and so it's really tailored to the individual. It's not a cookie cutter approach. Um, and so just wanted to throw that out there. And so over the eight or 16 sessions, we'll be re-evaluating. We take new pictures. We see what's getting better, see what's not. Um, make sure you're doing the exercise correctly because that's very important as well. The form is gonna make a big difference. And then as your body changes, it's natural that the exercises will change as you're, and, and adapt over time. Um, we, as your pain goes down and you start to get more functional, we tend to shift more towards a strength focus and then just kind of getting you into a maintenance uh, a habit or some you know, routine that you can do for the rest of your life to, to stay out of pain once you get there. So um, that's kind of uh, what to expect. And it can all be done virtually on Zoom, just like this. Um, or in person, so it doesn't matter if you're in the UK or, or down the street, we can we can help you either way. So I think that was it. So look in the chat here. And then one last thing, uh, Zach, I wanted to mention is I see a few names here that um, former clients that we hadn't heard from in a while. Oh yeah. And just like to acknowledge that, you know, the past year and a half has been very, very challenging for a lot of people. Um, a lot more stress, you know, a lot more fear. Um, in clinic, uh, we've seen people just with significant, um, you know, uh, pain spikes over the past year and a half, worrying. You know, a lot of people just quit exercising altogether. Um, and so just, you know, want to um, invite those people to reach out, you know, come back in get a refresher and, you know, and, and get back on track. So it's critically important, you know, no matter what's going on, um, that we, you know, focus on keeping our bodies um, healthy and well. Yeah, super important, right? It's never too late, you know, even if you fell off the bandwagon, haven't been doing your exercises in a long time, <laughs> you can always start again, you know, so it's never, uh, or maybe you feel like you need a, something's different now than it was when you first came in. Um, there's a comment on here, uh, former client of mine just wanted to read that. It says, I've been doing the foot flexing and arm swinging exercise every morning. Went through eight sessions with Zach before that and the back pain I used to have is gone. That's awesome. I'm still wearing the orthotics, so I might try to ease out of them. Yeah, so uh, if you need any help with that or suggestions, let me know. Um, happy to walk you through that. But someone else said, I've had only one appointment with Kelly and doing the exercises daily. The changes in my alignment and posture and energy level is amazing. Great, yeah. uh, to hear some good feedback. So, um, well, I'll put, uh, let me put our contact info here. But like I said, you all should have already gotten the email to RSVP or maybe you found us on Facebook. So you can uh, contact us or just go to egoscue.com and just find, the, find our clinics um, and contact info there. Here's our email addresses. Um, if you'd like to schedule your evaluation or your first appointment, um, reach out. Or if you just have questions, happy to answer questions as well. We've, we can hang out for a couple minutes, I think. If anybody has any questions that didn't get answered yet, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, thanks everybody for coming. If, um, hopefully that was helpful and hope to hear or see you guys soon. So. Anybody else have any questions for those of you who are still here? Thanks, everyone. All right. Bye. <laughs> okay. Take care, everybody.